So does the work you do actually matter? How do you know? If I were to ask your boss which person on their team is creating the most value for your company today, would they say it was you? We all want to feel like the work we do is important and that we're a critical part of any team that we work on. But most of us also struggle to find a balance between the things that actually move the needle forward and the things that take up most of our time. This is something I've struggled with in my career, and the worst part is, I didn't even know it was a problem until recently. You see, I used to pick my work assignments based on a combination of direct instructions from my boss and things that I thought would get me the most attention and praise. I really like to keep my work vague. I never gave status updates because I did never want to admit that something wasn't done or that I'd done something that I liked better first just because I liked it. I never asked what was critical or important. I just did whatever I thought would get me a pat on the head. And for a while, this actually really seemed to be working for me. I did enough of the right things well that I was always close enough to doing a pretty good job. But was I doing work that mattered? No, I definitely wasn't. <laughs> uh, oh, shoot. Uh, once I joined Popforms, where our team is just the two of us, me and the CEO, Kate, it became painfully clear to me how unproductive and even harmful it can be to work on things that aren't important for your company. But did that stop me from trying to do things the old way for a while? No. I kept giving things uh, just my best shot, just because it was what I'd always done. As a result, for almost our entire first year in business, I struggled to work on the right things at the right time. I would constantly be working on an assignment, send it to my boss, Kate, only to have her respond, that's what you were working on? It turned out she never knew what I was doing, and I was almost never doing what she thought or hoped that I was. So that's where I was starting out. I was working incredibly hard and not getting the recognition and praise that I was chasing so hard, and my boss was really unsatisfied with my work. Uh, a lot of us struggle to find the balance between the things that we like to do and the instant gratification of things like emails and meetings, and don't give enough time to the things that really matter. As a result, our time gets taken up with things that just don't move the needle forward. Luckily, Popforms is in the business of creating tools to help people be better at their jobs. So we decided to work a little bit of our magic on ourselves, and we created a cycle that we still use today that helps ensure the most important work for our company is identified, accomplished, and recognized. It's a three-step cycle that I'll teach you today. Communicating up, advocating for communication down, and instituting a Monday ninja planning session. So step one, your boss has no idea what you do all day. It's true. Most managers are just too busy to know what every single person on their team is doing every day. And in fact, if they do know, it's not because they're really good at their job, it's because they're micromanaging. So it's up to you to make sure that you're communicating up your work so that your boss knows what your big priorities for the week are. But a lot of us like to avoid having this kind of conversation because we like to hang out in a kind of gray area where our boss knows that we're working, but they don't really know what we're working on. After all, if nobody knows what you're doing, nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. But nobody succeeds in that gray area. You might do okay and you might get by, but you will never be exceptional in your career. It's your job to make sure that the people who have the most influence over your career, your managers, know what you're working on. So how can you do this? Share your priorities. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> your manager should know what you're planning on working on every single week. You should tell them what you're thinking about working on, every idea, big and small, so that they can tell you if those are the right priorities for the week, or if you should focus on other things. It can be really hard to hear that the things that we're excited about working on aren't actually priorities this week, so a lot of us try to avoid this kind of conversation so we can just do the work we want to do. But think about it. Wouldn't it be better to have your awesome work received positively because you did it at the right time, rather than to have it be ignored or even criticized because you did it at the wrong time? 
And second, surface problems and ask for help. I hate talking about problems that I'm having at work, and I especially hate having to ask for help. After all, asking for help can feel a lot like failure. By admitting to somebody else, I need help with this, you're also revealing that you don't know everything. But here's the thing. Your boss knew that you were human when they hired you. You haven't been fooling them into thinking you were perfect this whole time, and you won't blow your cover if you ask a question now. It's your, part of your manager's job to help you because everybody at work has different skill sets and levels of experience, and it's part of their job to make sure you have the tools you need to succeed. Um, so how can you ask good questions? Oops, oh shoot. <laughs> sorry, oh sorry, I need to get my papers. <laughs> I'm a little nervous today. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, yes, you should still try to solve problems on your own, but you should also be willing to admit when you need help and bring those issues to your manager's attention so they can help you. So, step two, you need to learn your manager's priorities. So, when I was struggling to work on the right things at Pop Forms, I would never think to myself, I need to get better at asking questions. Instead, I would think something like, I need to get better at intuiting what Kate wants from me. But the thing is, I can't read minds. And unless you can, there's simply no better way to know what the most important things to work on are than to ask what the most important things to work on are. It doesn't matter how closely you work with someone, how often you email or chat or drink coffee with them during the day, there's just no way to be 100% sure what they're thinking without asking. Most managers share an ongoing stream of information with their teams. My boss, Kate, does this a lot, and I think of it as the endless stream of ideas. She emails me a million times throughout the day every time she has a thought about something she's seen that she likes or an idea that she has for our company. But it can be really hard to process the difference between something that's just an idea and something that's a strict directive. And for a long time, I was afraid to ask about what the difference was, uh, so as a result, I would end up spending a lot of time on something she'd meant to be just an idea, or I would disregard something that was supposed to be a big priority. So it's really important that you make asking good questions part of your weekly routine. Send a weekly status email or have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your boss, and take some time to ask them good questions. The best way to ask a question is to make it really, really simple for your boss to give you a clear, concise, specific answer that helps you move forward at work. So try to phrase your question in a way that makes it really easy. Instead of asking something vague like, what should I be working on this week? Try asking something like, what are your priorities for our team this week? Or, I'm thinking of working on X, Y, and Z. Do these sound like the right priorities to you? If you have a question about something that came up during the stream of information throughout the week, try asking, you mentioned X, Y, and Z in our meeting this week. Are these important priorities for our team? You can't control another person's behavior, but you can help your manager communicate in a way that's effective for both of you and helps you focus on the most important things to get done. So step three, your Monday ninja planning session. This is where you take what you learned in the first two steps of this cycle and turn it into a super productive week of work. Step one of your ninja planning session, set aside 10 to 30 minutes every Monday to plan out your week. A lot of people can find it really hard to justify this kind of time for an activity like thinking or planning, but it's really critical that you set aside time every week to stay in touch with what's really important for your company. After all, work changes week by week, and if you're not staying in touch with your biggest goals, you won't be working on things that matter. Step two, think about the, the week's goals. These are gonna be the big picture priorities that your company or your team is working on. Uh, you know, I guess it's your big, big picture goals. At Pop Forms, we set a monthly goal for things like increasing sales of our email courses, increasing website traffic, or growing signups for our email newsletter. These big picture goals help me focus on the actual tasks I need to do to make sure that the work I'm doing is moving our company forward. 
Next, outline the steps to achieve each goal. These are gonna be the things that you actually do in the office every day. Think of these in terms of the items on your to-do list. So when we were trying to grow the email list at PopForms, some of my tasks included adding newsletter signups to some of our most popular blog posts or brainstorming content for a downloadable ebook. This helps me focus on which tasks are important to do right now and which ones can actually wait until later. And the last step, create milestones in your work. A lot of us get really bogged down by having unrealistic expectations of what we can accomplish in eight hours a day. So track your productivity for one real work day. Then set your weekly tasks and priorities based on what you are actually able to accomplish and not what you wish you were able to accomplish or think you should be able to accomplish. Then set your priorities accordingly. This will allow you to communicate and set expectations with your manager so they know exactly what to expect and will keep you in touch with the biggest priorities for your company. And finally, talk to your manager about what happened in your Monday Ninja planning session. This is where the cycle starts all over again and you start communicating up. Talk to your manager about what you're thinking about working on and ask them if that sounds like the right priorities to them. Then reset if necessary and go and have a very productive week. My CEO Kate and I complete this cycle every single Monday. I sit down and do my Monday Ninja planning session and then we hop on the phone and I go over my priorities. She tells me her priorities and then we realign to make sure that we're both focused and doing the most important work for our company that week. It gets easier and easier to do these sessions every single week, and the longer you do them, the more in touch you'll be with the big picture goals for your company. Nobody comes to work to work on things that don't matter. Make sure that you're doing things that move your company forward and move your career forward. This month, make a Monday Ninja planning session part of your weekly routine, and I guarantee you'll find yourself doing more of the work that matters and feeling more satisfied with your career. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? We have some time, so. Uh, so what do you like as a tool to manage those tasks and then we think about the week? If you think about the, the next few weeks in front of that as well. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I was actually talking about with Kate, my CEO, yesterday, was that the more we do these Monday Ninja planning sessions, the more time we have in them, because they've gotten a little bit easier. We have more time to check in with big picture goals and think about what I'm working on this week and how, how will this align with what I want to work, be working on a year from now. Um, so we usually, we usually use really simple project management tools like Trello. Um, and then we just spend a little time talking about like what I'm working on this week, what I want to be working on in a month, and what I want to be doing in a year. So I, I think the really important thing is spending time on it. It matters less how you do it, but the, just that you keep doing it. Any other questions? Uh-huh. Oh, sure. Uh, we've actually been recently kind of like recalibrating our tagline. Uh, <laughs> most recently it's been uh, we create tools to help superstars be awesome at work. Uh, so we're creating like content and courses and all different kinds of stuff to, um, you know, if you're an overachiever at work, uh, how to take it to the next level. Uh -huh. Do you have to wear the black E during the ninja session? Uh, it's recommended but not required. Mm -hmm. Maybe for your first couple, it'll like help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks.